How do you see um, Google evolving in the next five years? Obviously, there, there was talk a couple of years ago that they were looking to invest into Facebook, and obviously that didn't quite work. Well, so, but remember, Microsoft got to invest into Facebook yes, at like yeah. some ludicrous valuation a yeah. couple of years ago. Uh, that doesn't look so ludicrous now, but no. uh, you know, I think the interesting thing is no one knows what's in that those deal terms and whether that precludes Google from getting Facebook data out and whether yeah. Bing might be able to get Facebook data and mm. those kinds of things. I I would say Google is clearly has clearly shown some intent with the launch of things like Google Buzz yeah. and with the data deal they did with Twitter that they care a lot more about signals other than just raw HTML links. Sure. Uh, on the web, and they, they really care about what do people share, how do they share, we, where can we get that data from. Mm. Um, I think if they could, they'd love to spider and index and use everyone's Gmail, mm. right? To like, and I guess we don't know that they don't, right? In in some ways. Well, there's obviously the, the whole talk of Google Analytics, you know, are they right, taking right. data from that? So well, they, I'm sure that I mean, there's no doubt about it. They're taking data from it. The yeah. question is. Is it being used and applied in individual kinds yeah. of ways, or is it being applied in a macro way that then says, "Oh, okay, you know, web traffic tends to look like this. This is oddities. This is you know good areas. We should focus on these things or try and get you know spider this kind of stuff because it looks like there's lots of traffic going here and we don't have any content from that place. Sure. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. So I, I would say that uh, the future of Google is to expand the signals that they look for in terms of relevancy and popularity, mm -hmm. as well as, you know, they showed this off with their move to the new interface recently. Yeah. Was that a couple weeks ago? Yeah, it was like two, two, three weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, with, you know, and I think that that really is around saying that people care about more than just 10 blue links, mm -hmm. um, which is interesting because Google was the classic kind of like, Win with ten blue links, even though Ask and Yahoo and Microsoft were coming up. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, we tried this search. Oh, this is the most popular search today. Yeah, three D, you know, three D search, Ask three D, and and now Google's looking more and more like their competitors <laughs> did like four or five years ago. It's funny. This still, I, for me, Google is just a million miles apart, and it's just I think a lot of it is down to um, simplicity. Just you know, if you look at you know, the home page but, but they're definitely getting away from that simplicity a little, right? Like, I mean, the, the, the first initial landing page, you know, the search box, oh, two yeah, buttons, yeah. That, that will always be there. You'll never see that changing, to be honest. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think they could start maybe putting news in, maybe change it to iGoogle? Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't completely rule it out, right? So if search becomes more saturated and Google feels like they're on the defensive around uh, Let's say that Carol Bartz has a lot of success at Yahoo, mm. Zuckerberg has lots of success with Facebook, like dominating the advertising sphere mm. and uh, display advertising and brand advertising on the web takes significant leaps forward because of personalization and social and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Google might feel threatened enough that they would maybe make, yeah, maybe make some, some efforts. I can see we'll it. Have see. I can see we'll it. Have to see. See, what, see what happens. I know, we'll do this interview again in five years. <laughs> <laughs> The big buzzword at the moment is conversion optimization. And I know it's something you've talked about at the beginning of this year. Yeah. Um, and I've had a couple of people ask me about it, but I think it'd be great to just kind of get your interpretation of what it really is um, and kind of the process that it involved with it. Sure, yeah. I mean, so I think the sad thing is that it's a buzzword this year when it should have been a buzzword since the internet started in 1984, yeah, right? Yeah, web design really kicked <laughs> off, you know, 10 I mean, years ago. Right, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy to think that we would not uh, have have thought about the internet the same way we think about anything else, right? People, people doing packaging design and doing you know store design and, and layout optimization and uh, TV commercial optimization and uh, you know all these guys who like sell on the QVC and the yeah. like late night channels, right? They all work on how can I sell more of these products and what if I demo it this way will I sell more? And yet, conversion rate optimization CRO has been around. You know, yeah, a good decade on the internet, but it's it's just getting buzz yeah. in the marketing field, and that's uh, that's weird. Uh, essentially, it's that same process applied to the web. It's saying, what psychologies can I leverage? Uh, what can I change? What can I uh, make better that will improve the number of people who, or improve the percentage of people who come and buy from me, or come and take some action on my site? Right? Websites are not unless you're just selling display advertising, that's your whole model, mm -hmm. they're not just meant to be visited. Like, 
you know, websites want people to take action. Even, yeah. even sites that sell display advertising want you to sign up for their email list, want you to click on their ads. It's a whole you know. journey for a website, basically. Yeah, yeah. right? And you want, you want actions to take place. I think when we all go on the web and we want to find answers to questions, unless it's just you know, find an answer to this one thing and it, all I needed was that piece of knowledge, mm -hmm. we all want to take action on the web too, right? When I go, when I go to a site, I mean, I want to find uh, you know, a great email list that I can sign up for. I want to find you know, great blog posts that I can share around and I want to find cool infographics that I can tweet about. Right, so Great stuff. there's there's inherent yeah there's inherent value in optimizing that process yeah and so I I would urge everyone anyone and everyone to go read about conversion rate optimization mm -hmm. there's lots of good posts out there do you think then the gap between kind of web design and SEO do you think that could be brought further together really with that because obviously you design a website and you don't really kind of focus on the SEO you know there's a, there's a conference going on at the moment. Um, just across the road in London, and they were talking about, you know, web designers should learn SEO um, because there's too much of a gap. So yeah, design a website is just not SEO friendly, for example. Well, and this is, I think, there's also that same gap with SEOs need to learn conversion rate optimization, yeah. right? I, we need to be making sure that we're not focused on just driving the traffic, but on getting the traffic to do the thing that the customer wants it to do. Yeah. Uh, so it's, you know, if you rank number one, you still might not get the orders. Oh, that you want. I, you'll get the traffic, but you won't get the orders. I would so rather be, you know, rank number five mm. and converting, you know, five or ten percent than rank number one and converting, you know, one out of every two or three hundred visitors. Great. I mean, because just every visitor you're, you're missing out on is an opportunity, is a lost opportunity. Yeah, right? yeah exactly. Okay, fantastic.